climate change is one symptom, but just one symptom only, of a much greater problem of human ecological dysfunction. The human system, the whole of the human enterprise, has already exceeded the carrying capacity of the planet for human beings. The work we do is in terms of something we call ecological footprint analysis. Ecological footprinting attempts to identify, to quantify the total area of ecosystems required by any specified population to produce all of its resources and to assimilate its important wastes. And what we have found is that the total human eco-footprint already exceeds the biocapacity of the planet. Carbon dioxide, one of the principal drivers of climate change, is the single largest waste output in all industrial economies. So we have a dilemma. The dilemma is this. We're already in excess of the global capacity to assimilate carbon dioxide, and yet 3 billion people live in more or less poverty. This means we can't possibly hope to raise those people to a decent standard of living using any existing technologies without completely destroying the capacity of the Earth system to sustain human beings. We need carbon taxes. We need cap, auction, and trade systems in place so that the price of fossil fuels tells the truth about the ecological damage costs of the use. And until that happens, this problem will not be solved. We need a global scheme in which uh, uh, the rights of access to the world's carbon assimilation capacity is allocated to countries on a per capita basis. Each human life is equivalent to every other human life. And that would mean that countries like Canada or the United States, which use four or five times as much fossil fuel as the average person, would be stuck with only the rights uh, of a, a person in a very poor country who is underutilizing his or her access to the atmosphere. So that means we would <clears throat> set up the basis for a global trade in carbon rights. In other words, let's cap the uh, emissions of carbon dioxide at the level that is assimilatable by the atmosphere. Allocate the remaining capacity equally to people around the world. Countries that are underutilizing their capacity would have excess rights. Countries like Canada, the United States, Europe that are overutilizing their fair share would have to buy those rights from other countries. So we'd have a global system of cap and trade and carbon rights based on the fundamental rights of individuals being equitable. We can no longer operate as individuals or even as individual countries. It's not possible for any single person or any single city or any single country to become sustainable on its own. We're all on the same ship. The ship will either sink with all of us or float with all of us. This is a collective problem requiring our collective solutions and that means that we come together as a global community, forget the politics, in order to conserve life on Earth, or at least the prospects for civilized human existence, uh, we need a global strategy in which we must reduce our carbon emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions by 80% before the uh, middle to end of this century. My primary message was that people stop being either optimistic or pessimistic, simply get realistic about the nature of our situation and start acting as if the science meant something. You know, humans claim to be a species of high intelligence capable of logical analysis. We claim to be capable of forward planning. I teach in a planning school. The assumption is that we can take available information and plan for a better future. We claim to be a species capable of making moral judgments. So there are three qualities that make us human and um, raise us above all the other life forms on the planet. And yet when you think of it in the collective sense, there's no evidence that the world as a community at any of the climate summits so far has applied collective intelligence to these problems. We are not planning as if we have a stake in the future, and we're certainly not extending our moral judgment to recognize that it's simply morally and ethically inappropriate for the rich to continue to consume four or five times their fair share of the world's fossil fuel resources and to use four or five times their fair share per capita of the world's assimilation capacity. So my message is get human, be intelligent, plan for the future, and exercise your moral judgment. 
And if we do those three things on a collective level, this problem will be solved.